Hello everyone. In this today's video of physics, we are going to start with the second chapter in 11th standard Maharashtra State Board syllabus and the name of the chapter is Mathematical Methods. The chapter is popularly known as the chapter of vectors because in the initial part the chapter speaks about what are scalar physical quantities, what are vector physical quantities and later on we actually study what are the different terms and what are the different things associated with physical quantities which are vectors, about the addition of vectors, about the subtraction of vectors, about the vector product. There are two different types of multiplications that are possible in vectors. One is called scalar product and the other is called vector product. Very popularly they are also called as dot product and cross product. And at the end of this chapter we will be talking about the different physical, I mean mathematical formula which are required for us while studying physics. So first of all let us talk about what are scalar physical quantities and what are vector physical quantities. As the notes I can see here that scalar physical quantities are all those physical quantities which can be completely described by their magnitudes alone. You do not need any direction for that particular physical quantity and its complete description. So all those physical quantities which can be entirely expressed only by their magnitude they will be called scalar physical quantities. Say for example I talk about the speed of a particle, I talk about length, I talk about temperature, I take into consideration time or density or volume or mass. So all these physical quantities which basically do not require any direction for its complete representation they will be called scalar physical quantities whereas the vector physical quantities are all those physical quantities which need both magnitude and direction for their complete measurement or description they all will be called as vector physical quantities. Now which of those physical quantities which we have are actually vector physical quantities? The first chapter of physics which uh, some other teacher will be teaching you, it talks about what are the different physical quantities and it teaches you or it makes you aware of what different physical quantities are there if not all at least few of them. So here what are those physical quantities which need both magnitude and direction? Say for example I talk about displacement. Displacement I can say is the shortest distance of uh, you see between the two points. It is from one starting point to the other starting other end point that shortest distance it will be representing displacement. Even if the particle has got a distance covered still the displacement of a particle can be zero if I take into consideration that I have a particle performing a circular motion and one complete circle takes place. So particle overall comes back to the same point once again. Overall the starting point and end point being same the displacement of particle can be zero but still the particle has covered distance equal to its circumference that is equal to 2 pi r. So displacement is different than that of the distance. Displacement is from starting point to the end point. So here we have uh, velocity is another such vector physical quantity and this uh, velocity and speed once again like in case of displacement and distance many people who are not actually science students they can have misconception. Similarly is about velocity and speed that velocity and speed they are equal in magnitude only when the particle is moving along a rectilinear direction or in a straight line. 
only then the velocity will be same as speed otherwise velocity can differ at different different points because velocity takes into consideration the magnitude of velocity as well as the direction also acceleration is one of the vector physical quantities momentum is there force is there torque electric current is there electric fields magnetic fields there are so many physical quantities uh, when i talk about vector force in most of the problems whenever it is described or it is given the magnitude of force itself is given to us and the direction is not given so at that time we can take into consideration only magnitude as only magnitude will be quite sufficient for us to solve that particular example and there in that case we may take into consideration the force to be in the direction of the related physical quantities but whenever you talk about vector quantities in reality one has to express or say it correctly what is the direction and what is the magnitude everything has to be taught, uh, talked about now what are the different terms associated with a vector physical quantity the what are the two what are different types of vectors that we have the first which we are saying here is zero vector if you say here it is zero vector a vector which is having zero magnitude it will be called as zero vector now how can a vector have a zero magnitude it is very simple that if i say as i said it earlier that one complete circular motion and the displacement has become zero so it is zero vector the displacement has become overall zero if you say i have kept an object on the surface of a table the weight is acting in the downward direction the normal reaction is acting uh, provided by that particular surface of the table so the net force is equal to zero in that particular case so the net force there turns out to be equal to zero if i have you see multiple forces acting at a certain point such that they all cancel each other is effect then once again the net force acting on such a particular object can be equal to zero if you say i have got an object floating in air so if i say the object is floating in air it means that the weight is acting in the downward direction and the buoyant forces are said to act in the upward direction so once again the net force can be considered to be equal to zero so that's what we call it as zero vector uh, here the example of course which is given it says that the net force acting in the equilibrium position can be considered to be zero force the acceleration of a particle having uniform velocity that is one of the better examples because we define acceleration as the rate of change of velocity so if at all your velocity remains constant the acceleration will always turn out to zero uh, so that's about it now we speak about the other thing that is called resultant force this word resultant is actually used for the addition that whenever you have two or three or four or multiple forces or multiple vectors acting at a certain point their vector addition will be called as the resultant vector what do i mean by this that instead of three or four or two forces or two vectors acting at a point a single vector which will produce the same effect as all those multiple vectors were acting at the point that would be called as a resultant vector so it's a single vector which produces the same effect as all vectors are acting at that particular point it will be called as a uh, you see a resultant vector now Uh, we will actually see after some time some more animations as uh, time uh, if time permits us here uh, we will go for what's meant by negative vector now negative vector or opposite vector to understand what is negative vector i also need to understand basically what is meant by an equal vector so here first of all i'll speak about what is meant by an equal vector or what are equal vectors the vectors as we already have said the vector quantity talks about both magnitude and direction and that is why a vector will be said to be equal when it has equal magnitude and equal direction so if it is having equal direction or the same direction the vectors have to be parallel or they must be in the same line i can say so the vectors having the same magnitude as well as same direction 
they will be called equal vectors. So here in this diagram it shows that I have got equal vectors vector A and vector B here. Uh, we have got some animations here probably I must be having those animations here. I will just go for that. Uh, well, well, here if you see I have got two vectors vector A and vector B here. In fact, this animation is for the addition of vectors but now I, I do not want to speak about what is the addition. Of course, I will speak about it a little later in the same thing. But I now want to show what is meant by an equal vector. So, if I take into consideration this red vector A here to be taken to some other position, if I just lift this vector and move it at any other place, keeping its magnitude same and I move it parallel to itself, say A is moved like this. Same is the story with B here. So, A is moved here, B is moved here. Here I find that A and this vector A, they are parallel and of equal value. This vector B and this vector B, they are parallel and of equal value. So, I want to say here by using this particular animation that parallel vectors which are having equal magnitude, they are considered to be equal vectors. This animation is also showing you that how can I get the vectors added up. So, that here I have taken vector A here, at the end of A I have taken vector B here. So, their addition gives me some other vector called as vector C1. Now, instead of adding A with B, I can also add B with A. So, B is taken here, A is taken here and B plus A gives you some other vector called C2 and then I find that this C1 and this C2, they are found to be equal. Just take this C1 here, take this C2 here and I find C1 and C2 are not only parallel but also equal they are and that is why I understand that A plus B vector which is also called as resultant of vector A and vector B is same as vector B plus vector A which is the resultant of B and A again. So, that addition is commutative I can also understand that addition is always commutative in this particular case. So, uh, that is how we are going to have this particular thing. Uh, well, now we go for something called uh, you see negative or opposite vectors. The vectors which are having same magnitude but which are exactly in the opposite direction 180 degree opposite they will be called as negative vectors. So, here in this diagram it shows me that vector A is pointing somewhere in this direction vector B is exactly equal in magnitude but 180 degree opposite to that then in this case I would always say that vector A is equal to minus of vector B. So, whenever it says that vector A is equal to minus of vector B I have to keep in mind ki a and B are equal in magnitudes, but only their directions are opposite is represented by that negative sign. So, that is about a negative vector. Then we speak about something called a unit vector. Now, what is unit vector? A vector having unit magnitude, it will be called as unit vector. I would say a vector having unit magnitude will be unit vector, I can say it as. The purpose of unit vector is to give the direction to a certain vector. That is the purpose of a unit vector. So, usually what we have is we have got a vector pointing either in the xy plane or it can be in the yz plane or it can be in the xz plane or it can even be a three dimensional vector. So, since vector can be in space as well, I need to take into consideration three dimensional vectors and that is the reason we take into consideration three things. One is along x axis unit vector called i, the unit vector pointing along y axis is called j and the vector pointing unit vector pointing along z axis is taken as vector k. Now, how can I find or how can I calculate unit vector is what we will be talking about in our next video. So, this was all in the first uh, video of our scalars and vectors or our mathematical methods. Thanks for watching this video.